So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, EO Cafe, where the EO community meets. This is our 39th EO Cafe, which will, as I said last time, will very soon be two years old. Uh, it seems, uh, you know, we started when the lockdown started, and uh, now we're two years on, so it seems, seems just yesterday. Um, we open our doors every second Thursday at uh, four o'clock, 1600 CET. We try to mix up the subjects to have something for everyone and to retain the, the re interest of all different levels of experience, which is something that uh, we've been finding recently. It's not an easy balance to balance between people who don't know anything about a subject and those who know something about it. But just that's all to say that we really welcome feedback on uh, how well we are doing and how well we achieve this balance. So please, uh, please let us know how we're doing. Um, we also publish a recording, um, as well as a short blog, which reflects on the key points, picks up a little bit from the discussion and maybe one or two other uh, points in, in, indeed. And this is especially the case where there are policy uh, issues associated with the subject. But uh, today we return to the subject of uh, artificial intelligence. We had a lot of requests to, uh, to come back as it's a, a strong subject or a subject of strong interest at the moment. So we had a lot of people saying, you know, could we come, come back to it? So we're, we're doing so and coming back to the uh, question of EO, uh, IO, <laughs> excuse me, AI for Copernicus. Um, before I introduce our guests, just a reminder, um, use your reminder, keep your microphones off unless uh, I invite you to join the discussion, which I will if you've got a question. Um, keep your cameras on if you wish. We like to see people rather than black squares, but um, we understand that uh, some people don't wish to, um, uh, to have their cameras on at the time, so it's optional. Um, if you have questions, please put them into the chat. Um, that allows us to see what's coming up and to, to manage, uh, manage the questions, manage the time. Um, but if you put your question into the chat and then I'll generally ask you to, uh, to pose the question yourself uh, in your own words and to, uh, to join the discussion. You can also use the chat as a forum for connecting with other people in the call. And uh, that's quite a nice, uh, a nice feature as well. So as I said, today we return to the subject of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, just one year ago, we heard from the team of AI for Copernicus um, what their plans were for the project. Vangelis Karkaletis uh, explained how AI for Copernicus was linking a much broader um, AI project, AI for EU, as well as the various DSs to provide a bridge between Copernicus as an EU flagship and its data and services available through the through the a number of DS to the resources available under the AI for EU. So we'll come back to that later. So last time, um, as well as Evangelist, we had Michele Lazzarini from the EU SATSEN, who's with us again today. This time he's joined by uh, Iraklis Klampanos. And um, just to start off, um, Michele, Iraklis, perhaps you'd like to uh, just say a few words to introduce yourselves. Yes, hello. Uh, thanks, thanks, Jeff. Um, uh, so, so I'm I'm a research associate, a research staff at NCSR Democritus in Athens, and um, I'm joining this call uh, as as a deputy to Vangelis Kakaletis, who's, who's the project coordinator. Um, but my background is really on uh, on data intensive science and um, and on intelligent data engineering. So, so th this is the angle that I'm I'm, I'm attacking this from. Um, and, uh, and and yeah, as I said, I've been I've been involved in this in this project since the since its inception, um, and uh, and I'll be really happy to to get involved and to to, to share with you some details about about the project and about uh, prospects that we we are having at the moment. Okay, thanks, Siraklis Michele. Hi, everybody. I'm Michele Lazzarini. I work in uh, Satsen as uh, project manager since 2015. My, we are based uh, for the people that don't know is in, uh, in Madrid, just uh, outside of Madrid in Spain. Um, in AI for Copernicus, uh, uh, such a role is, uh, we have a, a double role. Uh, we are responsible of the so-called bootstrapping services. I will explain uh, today during this uh, EO Cafe more about this uh, service we provide. And we as Satsen, uh, being an institution working the space security domain, we represent the security domain within the AI for Copernicus uh, project. 
my background right. essentially is mainly related to earth observation, let's say in uh, general uh, terms. Yeah, thanks. Um, one of the things we have been trying to do recently is just to try and explore a little bit the um, uh, sort of the institutional setup in Europe. There's a lot of people joining the sector, and so um, you know we're trying to uh, to address that. I haven't planned to go into that today, but if we have time, maybe we'll come back to it and talk a little bit more about the Satsen. But uh, we'd also like the Satsen to come into a future uh, EO cafe, and I've been exchanging with Denis uh, on on that question. So um, as far as uh, AI for Copernicus is concerned, uh, the project kicked off, we heard um, just about a year ago. Heraklis, you're the deputy, um, as you explain, uh, deputy of the coordinator. Could you just tell us a little bit about the goals, of the, remind us really what are the goals of the project and explain a little bit where you've got to in the year that's uh, elapsed? Um, Absolutely. Um, let me just uh, share my screen a bit. Um, we have prepared a few, maybe a very few slides uh, so that we can. Uh, right. OK, so uh, presumably you can you can see my my screen, right? Yeah. OK, good. Um, so so uh, AI for Copernicus is really, uh, really aims to, to stand in the middle between AI for EU or the AI on demand platform, as we recently uh, call it. Um, and the Copernicus ecosystem. Um, so, uh, so, so the idea is that because Copernicus is obviously a very influential um, ecosystem uh, and AI is significant and it seems to be one of the major drivers these days, and hopefully it will remain so, um, this, this would actually make a lot of sense uh, in terms of the, as, as a project, right? So this is where we stand. And um, uh, in, in terms of, in terms of the, um, some of the core objectives of this of this project is uh, first of all to technically try to integrate some things that might make sense between AI uh, on demand and the DS platforms, which are which are, which are uh, really uh, sort of uh, instrumental in uh, in driving innovation, development, and research on Copernicus. Um, uh, another major uh, aspect and the objective of the, the project is, of course, to, to, to create an innovation cycle between the, between the two uh, ecosystems and the two world, worlds, um, and of course, increase the use and the uh, influence of, of, of all platforms involved, including AI for EU or AI on demand, as well as um, the DIA systems. Um, so, so one of the so, so we do so we do this through through a number of uh, a number of aspects. One major uh, um, angle is is the open calls, and I think this is one of the major reasons why, why uh, it's important that we are here today. Um, uh, we have already had uh, our first couple of open calls, uh, <clears throat> and there there have been a number of projects awarded um, uh, these 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 calls now, and they will uh, they have actually officially started first of March. And um, these these projects uh, are we're talking about mainly uh, innovative actors uh, spanning areas from security and energy and agriculture, and this is more or less the, the way that the, the third and the fourth open calls will actually go. Um, the the third and the fourth open calls they, they have a deadline of the, for the thirtieth of April, and of course people can find more information on the on the project's website. And more things. Uh, actually, Michele will actually share us, uh, share with us more things in a bit. Um, right. Okay. And uh, so, so of course, uh, this is a very brief introduction to to what we aim to do, uh, and it might be a bit abstract. So uh, please just ask away uh, in a bit. But I think now I would like to to give the floor to to Sistema who represent one of the winning bids of, of our, uh, our first open call. Maybe they can actually share with us uh, their story about the AIFO Copernicus. Hi, thank you for inviting us. So I'm Alexandra and I'm working for Sistema. Now I will um, uh, introduce our project. We are the winner of the first open call. Uh, so our project name is the Super Resolution for Climate Crisis Context, short is SR4C3 which the aims to bring innovation to the climate humanitarian conflict crisis sector by enhancing the remote sensing based technological tools 
through the application of AI algorithm on security domain challenges. And we are doing this by uh, starting from the already available AI algorithm developed uh, by Systema, which is the super resolution uh, algorithm. The consortium uh, is, um, uh, consists of Systema, which is uh, the project leader, and each is a, it's a, an Austrian-based company, which has a strong background in working with satellite data and offers a wide range of products and services based on remote sensing analysis techniques and IT application. And the second uh, partner is the Conflict Management Consulting, which is short for CMC, and it's an international nonprofit organization that provides research services and technical assistance in fragile conflict and post-conflict areas. So this was um, our project introduction. Thank you for listening. If you have questions, please let me know. Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, if, if there are any questions um, so far. I, I wonder if you can uh, say, expand a little bit about a little bit on the call. Um, you know what the the projects that have been selected and uh, how how successful the call was. Did you get a good Did you get a good response? Um, we we got an excellent response. I think um, the and uh, and the the, the review. Um, uh, procedure was was actually uh, fairly busy, I would say, and hopefully we're hoping for even a better, an even better uh, response for the third and the fourth open calls. Um, the, the 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 projects uh, really were, at least for the first open call, were asked to develop an innovative service, making use of uh, AI techniques. Uh, as well as Earth observation data and potentially services as well by utilizing DS platforms um, and, and their services. We focused on a couple of, of these DS platforms. I think uh, main, uh, perhaps Michele knows, uh, knows this in, in, in greater detail, but, but um, I think Creo DS is, is, is the, the one and, the, and Wakeo is the second one. Um, uh, we we try to keep the door open to, to more DSs, but it's sometimes it's technically uh, difficult. Uh, but but we're always open to suggestions. Um, and uh, and this is this is this is really this is really about it uh, as far as the first the first uh, open calls concerned. The one of the major goals is to is really to try to understand more about what users want and the requirements of the innovative in, in, innovators in, the, in, in Europe um, so that we influence perhaps to the degree that it's, um, that it's possible the, the AI on demand platform as well as to uh, actually empower it, right? To populate, to create new services for it and make it a bit more uh, useful to, to, to more people. So um, maybe just to Dig a little bit further there. Perhaps I could ask, um, or <laughs> tell me, can I ask Alexandra to uh, um, expand a little bit on their relationship with the other uh, project and um, maybe with the uh, the DS? How are you working with the? Uh, which is it? I guess it's Mundi, as that's your uh, focus at the moment. What 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 exactly does that mean? Uh, so we will uh, use yes for um, for uh, uh, for, sent, uh, for satellite images to to take satellite images and to uh, use it in our uh, algorithm. So are you, are you you're installing um, processes on on the DS or are you uh, simply using it as a data source? Well, we. Well, we are using a data source. Okay. Okay. Um, Heraclis, I know last time we talked about um, AI for EU, which was the sort of the much wider um, European platform that was being being set up. I think that project's now finished, finished a few months ago. Mm. Um, are the, has that been successful? Has that been useful? Are there still resources available under AI for EU? 
Um, I think that, that overall AI for you has been a successful project. Um, uh, there are still there are still some resources available. So, for example, the the, the AI for EQ catalog of services is still is still online and will remain so. And and um, and there is also a follow up project that will actually start uh, soon, uh, which is called. Uh, AI for Europe, and it will actually take this even further. So there's plenty of opportunity to to shape thing, this even even more in the in the coming years and make it uh, make it really really useful. So th those resources are available for new bidders and uh, to, uh, so to, to to integrate. So these, right. So so these resources will uh, are available to new bidders. I have to say though, that, but by so AI for EU uh, has uh, has a catalog of services uh, first and foremost, which is actually very useful to the innovation actors because this is a this is a place where they can actually advertise things that they've developed um, and potentially network and uh, and uh, with with other with other people. Um, there is also uh, uh, ongoing work on an experimentation platform, which is much more hands on. This will continue. Uh, of course, on uh, in, in the in the in the following project in the coming years, um, but the main resources that are available to, available to the to the bidders come from from the DS platforms and have to do with ser uh, Copernicus services, basic both, both and as well as uh, higher level services that can be found there, mm. as well as of course computational resources for people to do their work. Um, so so. Um, uh, of course, people can also make use of other resources and, uh, uh, for example, models that have been published on the AI for EU catalog, for instance, uh, if they wish and if it suits their needs, uh, as well as, of course, they can make use of uh, services and, um, uh, and, and tools that have been provided by the AI for Copernicus consortium, about which Michele will actually say a few more things. Well, that seems like a good uh, a good introduction uh, to, to to move across. I think um, a lot of people here are, are here to to hear what the opportunities are coming from the calls and how they could uh, respond. So um, let me uh, move to Michele and uh, tell us about the uh, uh, what's coming up now. What's the future of for uh, AI for Copernicus? Here I am, and just like to share the screen can you see my screen okay yes we see it yeah thanks for the introduction um before passing directly to the open call uh, i posted a, a link in the chat uh, just to show the uh, number of application we have in the first round we received uh, 34 uh, submissions divided in the different domains, uh, uh, agriculture, energy, health, and security, as you can see. Uh, also to answer one question in the chat is true. We see the last opportunity for the AI for Copernicus, but the proposals are uh, quite short. So are like uh, uh, 16, 17 pages. So it's true, there's still uh, like three, four weeks to, to, to prepare them, but it doesn't take a lot of time. So I think it's still feasible, even if you are, um, uh, if you have the first time the, the knowledge of the, of the course today, I think you can still uh, submit some uh, nice ideas. Um, coming back to what I would like to, to, to tell you is about the um, some uh, services, some resources we made available for the open course uh, winners. Uh, they are so-called bootstrapping services. So Iraklis already said that you probably are aware there are four domains represented in uh, AI for Copernicus, security, agriculture, energy, and health. Uh, we have some technical partners, some, uh, let's say, uh, domain uh, partners. And they, what we did was basically uh, providing a series of services uh, built on uh, um, mainly uh, sentinel data, so on Copernicus uh, data, to facilitate the bidders uh, in, their, uh, in their task. The aim of the uh, project is to build uh, AI applications uh, based on uh, earth observation data. What we did basically was to facilitate the, the creation of this algorithm, how? mainly to providing, uh, let's say, pre-processing services, for instance, pre-processing of uh, Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 uh, Sentinel data. We provided uh, uh, also some uh, uh, 
possibility, possibility to have some training uh, data, which is very important in the artificial intelligence domain. So possibility to train, uh, to create data set for to train the algorithm with a uh, from open state map. We create also some um, uh, change detection algorithm with Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 to compare as benchmark to, to verify uh, their, um, their usability compared to what the bidders can, uh, can, can create with, with the flow of artificial intelligence. And uh, also some uh, directly some uh, machine learning algorithm for, uh, for classification and uh, feature detection. So the idea is to create, a, to provide the bidders, uh, the winners with a whole package of services plus, of course, the access of the data through DIAS uh, in order to allow them just to focus on this, uh, let's say, this type of uh, uh, their, their role, which is creating like a, a new application uh, uh, using uh, artificial intelligence for uh, your data. Uh, all the maintenance of these uh, uh, services are on, on us, on IFR Copernicus. We provide them through dockers, which can be installed uh, directly also in their uh, own machine of the winner. So uh, we really hope that these services are um, useful for the bidders. And actually, uh, it's very important that if you want to apply for this uh, new third and fourth round of uh, open call, uh, you will uh, you will uh, use this, uh, some of these services, not all of them because there are like 15 services, but uh, at least try to verify uh, which one can be useful for, uh, for you. All the information about these services is available in the technical documentation of the of the open uh, of the open calls. Uh, we can go uh, now for the um, uh, open calls around three and four. Iraklis already introduced the uh, our schema. The first two open calls closed uh, last year. Now we have uh, in the we are opening uh, the round three and uh, and four. Uh, to give you more details on this, you can find everything in the website of uh, IFR Copernicus. I just prepared a couple of slides with a little bit more of information. Uh, the third round, we uh, are available to found uh, until eight uh, projects. It's uh, really similar, if you are familiar with the uh, IFR Copernicus framework, with the first round of an open call, but this time, instead of a consortium, like a one that Alexander presented for uh, led by Sistema that they won for the uh, first batch of open call. In this, this time, we just need a small uh, single partner project. So just one uh, uh, represented. And we, we are not limited to the four domains we presented before. So not limited to health, agriculture, uh, security, and energy. So for instance, if you're coming from a maritime domain or from another domain, uh, you can, uh, for the food security domain, you can uh, you can bid for uh, for one of these uh, this calls. Uh, some dates, the deadline will be, as I said before, 30th of April. Uh, the selection proce process will be done through in, in May, in, in, uh, in, uh, through, from May from May to July. And the idea is to start uh, uh, after the grant agreement uh, uh, phase to start, let's say, in autumn of uh, this year. The fourth round of open call. Uh, during the second round of open call, uh, the, the, it was mainly, uh, it was a small budget award. It was like five, 5K as budget. It was more like a prize for innovative ideas. In uh, the people that uh, bid for this, uh, for this call uh, identified 11 societal challenges. So now the idea is to fund until up to oh, three, uh, three projects either shaped by two partners or three partners with this amount of money in specific societal challenges. These societal challenges, you can find them on the website directly on the FAI for, uh, for Copernicus, or you can find it here just to give you a very um, brief overview. So these are the 11 societal challenges. So you see a lot of topics uh, from like a different sector, like from waste management, legal fishing, air quality, health risk, poverty, greenhouse. So the idea for this, while the third round open call is quite open for your ideas, this one should be related to these 11 societal challenges. And I think regarding the new open call, that's it. I don't know if there are some questions in the meanwhile or... 
I think there's quite a lot of questions. I, um, leave up the uh, leave up the slide with the uh, social challenges. Um, yes. Maybe maybe we just concentrate on that one for a moment because for me you you, you these came out of the first call. So you had um, successful uh, proposals um, for limited funding, but to explain the idea of the social challenge is the way I read it. Just please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, we awarded only two projects of this. I think it was one in Thailand, the other one, I think I thought it was in the legal fishing, if I'm not mistaken, there was just two ideas. Uh, uh, awarded okay but we see these were the topic that probably the the bidders considered uh, interesting so uh, since there is an interest for the community let's say to to have some new solutions uh, new solutions uh using earth observation data and artificial intelligence we said okay let's try to uh, since there is an interest to let's say, push a bit the, the new proposals uh, on topics related to their uh, this interest. That's why we selected these uh, societal, societal challenges. Okay. And uh, now we hope to, to see something directly in this uh, topic because the first, uh, the second batch of open call, the, it was a small award. It was just like a, a concept, let's say. But now what we would like to see is real the uh, development of these ideas by um, also professional because the first uh, invest in, in the second round was just like a, uh, proposing something in a general and abstract way, but now we really would like to see the chain from the collecting the data and uh, also creating the, the processing of air observation data on, uh, data on top of this. Okay, these, these, these are big challenges, which um, are only going to be, uh, you know, there, there will just be a, a, a certain tool, I guess, to, uh, to start addressing some of these, but um, yeah. Uh, they, they strike me as being uh, very ambitious uh, topics the way the way they're written um what where i was 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 wondering if there are you know, people looking to to bid on this companies looking to uh, to bid in, in one of these areas um or obviously looking for for partners who maybe have um some uh, direct uh, experience of the social side the social challenge which is maybe where these came from um is there any guidance you can give for uh, for bidders looking for um uh, expertise in these areas is there anything that can be uh, can be shared mm. to, to be honest we we just uh, try to create the community through dissemination of our uh, events and our uh, feeds in social media we don't really uh, build the consortium on our, on our own, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, just participating to, I think, to our, uh, for instance, also to this EO Cafe, there might be some people interested in, uh, in creating a consortium and uh, also to not like favor a specific uh, part, of a specific institution. We don't really create this kind of consortium, but uh, uh, I guess we, we can, uh, if, you, if you follow us on social media, you can also see it, uh, some, uh, possible partners to, to be okay that involved. that yeah. that sounds like a good a good tip yeah i know it wasn't really so much about helping to build consortia but um clearly there is um there, there would be some interest in understanding the background to uh, to some of these um i mean maybe people on the uh, in the uh, eo cafe will be uh, mm. sort of messaging each other trying to uh, s set up some uh, some some teams and some partnerships um yeah what we did last year was basically uh we mm, Within the uh, IFR Copernicus Consortium, we had uh, four webinars, one for each domain, uh, basically for security, health, energy, and agriculture, where we explain what we are doing, what we would like to see uh, from the project. And this can be maybe a first step also to have some uh, more idea about the, the topics and uh, some on what we can do but of course when uh, this time there is no limitation also for the domain so we can also mm. expand these uh, these ideas okay um and those um those videos are available through the website i, I guess yep. yeah maybe so record the, available in the, uh, yeah website. There, there was a link in the chat um which you posted um on the to the calls but i guess that takes you to the website as well that you can uh, people exactly. can find yeah. more information yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Um, these, I think, these are teams. The, the 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 third call is single partner. You you referred to, um, and these are these are teams. Uh, I guess there are advantages in having um, in in having specialized partners uh, working in here. So there's an advantage in having a team rather than being a single uh, single bidder. Yep. For instance, if the first, uh, also if the case of uh, Alexandra, maybe she can say a little bit more, uh, the team was composed by a pure, uh, a pure, mainly a user and a technical partner. Mm. So oh, they can already, I think mm, it's something that we always said in the art observation domain, let's say having a user on board is always useful, not because at the end, uh, when you the technical partner has already the feedback on what he has to, to create, to, in the processing, we have to to prepare uh, having the feedback of a user to steer, let's say, is, uh, the the progress is uh, towards his uh, needs. I think is very useful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that that's particularly relevant for this fourth call. For the third call, where it it's can single. be a it, it's single partner, but can it be more than one, or is it purely single? I guess in terms of funding, it should be the only one. Okay. So maybe you, there is, it can be some user, but probably in kind, we don't, uh, it's not the schema we provide. Okay. 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 Fine. Um, um, if, if I can just jump in for uh, very briefly, I think the I think the idea is, and, and the, the reason why the the requirement on the on the participants and the on the on the mix of the the types of participants. Uh, changes from one call to the other is that we're trying to capture as much as we can from uh, from from the needs and from the you know from the from the from, from the area and from the way people work. Um, so the third the third call, I think that the the rationale behind having single partners is that because we want them to be able to experiment a bit more freely um, without being necessarily tied to um, you, you know to a product, for example. So which is which is close to what we had uh, during the first the first call, right? Um, and and the fourth and the fourth call, of course, is 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 larger sort of um, challenges. Of course, it it cannot be a huge sort of undertaking, but uh, given the budget, right? But but uh, what we try to do is to actually to create a diff different types of applications and different types of proposals um, in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, reminder to everyone: if you've if you've got questions, just uh, jot them down into the uh, into the chat so that we can we can see them. You can raise your hand if you wish, but uh, it's it's rather hard to follow. Um, so I, it's it's easier if somebody writes a question, and then we can uh, we can take it from 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 there. Um, Okay. So, so I'm sorry for interrupting. Something else no, that no. I, would, I would like to mention is because because obviously it's important, uh, and you know AI is 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 a large large field, and uh, there's definitely need uh, for um, uh, for funding opportunities. And AI for Copernicus is one of the one of the ICT forty nine projects. So there is a cluster of projects uh, whose main objective is to enforce AI on demand, right? The AI on demand platform. Uh, and so uh, similar to AI for Copernicus, there are other projects, not earth observation specific, right? So there might be a bit more general, but there may might also be opportunities for funding there if, uh, if somebody wants to have a look. And, um, and I think, um, I'm not sure whether, uh, whether uh, Faye can actually share with us the, the link to, uh, to a list of those projects, but I think I can also uh, do it as well. It's on the AI for Copernicus website too, right? So I'm just pasting, pasting a link now. If there is something more relevant, uh, Faye, please, please paste it in the chat. Um, so so that's, that's what I would like to, to add to it as well, because um, granted they are not earth observation specific, but it might be, uh, they, might, they might be suitable to, to some applications or to some of, uh, uh, of the people who have joined this, this, this call now. So, so they're more uh, more thematically uh, oriented rather than um, technology oriented. So some of them are more thematically oriented. Some of them uh, are, are more sort of oriented towards building marketplaces. You know, there's there's different uh, different uh, 
there's different focus from one project to the other, but uh, I think that uh, it's it's worth having a look. Um, okay, Delphine. Delphine, maybe she's not hearing me, um, has, has asked if, if there's one around um, marine ocean observations. Do you know if there's one? Not, not, not specifically, no. Okay. <laughs> so people can people can go and go go and look. Okay. Um, we also talked about the uh, AI for EO project. Um, are there any any links with with that um, that project going on? Any read across that, that was under the Safi Lab? I will leave the floor to Iraqli since it was part. AI uh, for EO, AI for EO, sorry, what did you say? AI for EO, yes, it was. Ah, um, yes. Yeah. We took, we did talk about yep. it last time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the end. Um, so, sorry, we had go, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, I'm sorry, what the it was AI for EO, every time with this acronym, sometimes it's, uh, sure. it's complicated. <laughs> No, I mean, uh, yes, uh, I was invited to speak uh, to one of their, uh, their event, uh, and at the end, uh, I think uh, the, the solution are very, uh, very, very, very lot of synergy between the different initiatives, now because they are both, uh, the, the idea is to try to uh, foster the use of uh, earth observation data and uh, using the artificial intelligence uh, methodology. Mm. So, uh, the ideally, uh, the, the solution should be that somehow um, we should also have a, uh, watch a, follow a sort of uh, interoperability in order to be available also for different communities. So in, uh, the solution may be developing within uh, our projects should be also available for uh, other partners after uh, uh, the project is completed and uh, vice versa also with uh, the solution provided for uh, IE4EO. For, for I guess interoperability is actually something very important in our domain in order to guarantee also a certain uh, sustainability after the end of the project. No? Yes, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there are there are also resources available there through through the, the fee lab and the uh, um, sort of coordinated through the AI for EO project. So again, probably um, most of the people concerned with this call are, um, are aware of, of that, but it is another source to look for. It is another um, place to go to try to find uh, support for any um, any projects you're, you're you're thinking about. Okay, we seem to have some confusion over names, but I'll uh, I'll gloss over gloss over that for now. Um, so, is is it what um, what would you advise um, bidders to? concentrate on to put together a successful proposal? What were the lessons from the first calls? What constitutes a successful proposal? What advice can you give? Um, so, so during the first call, we had, uh, we had many interesting uh, proposals uh, submitted. Um, I think that it's um, one of the one of the stumbling blocks for some of the proposals have been the the the, the 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 lack of uh, sort of uh, reuse of the resources that are made available to them. So uh, we we have we did have cases where, for instance, uh, people would like to, to to explore something or other without really uh, needing to to make use of uh, uh, Copernicus data, be it on DSS or otherwise. Uh, uh, even though they they would still qualify as as Earth observation, I suppose. Um, or, for instance, that they they didn't uh, demonstrate um, um, any interest, for instance, in interacting with the AI, AI of, uh, for EU at this stage and AI on our platform now. So if, I would say that um, in terms of in terms of um, the, the the subject of the proposals, uh, I I would think we're fairly open, especially now. Um, that we're not bound by the four initial uh, areas that we identified. Uh, but I think that it's, imp you know, we, we really want to create things that may, might make a difference to the, to the ecosystem, to, 
to, to the overall ecosystem. So we don't want isolated uh, um, solutions or things that are completely behind closed doors. I mean, obviously, sometimes we understand that things will be closed, but we, we still need to have uh, ways to, to, to interface or interact. I think, I think that would be important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So use of Copernicus data, use of um, resources available from the project, some form of um, links to, to, to a, a user organization or a user um, uh, representative um, would, be, uh, would, be, would be successful um, questions. Um, and, and, also, and also making use or, or want, sort of, uh, wanting to make use of uh, AI for EU resources, right? And yeah. the catalog that because I don't, you know, <laughs> you know, this is one of the, of our core objectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, it's it's what I meant by the use of resources, but I wasn't wasn't very clear. Sure, um, Jeff, Jeff Smith, come come and join Hello. us. Hello, everyone. Uh, good to um, see you. Yeah, quite. A, I just want to make a kind of general question, really. It's because uh, um, AI can be applied to a huge range of applications in EO and beyond. Um, but I just wondered when you have these proposals come in, do you evaluate them on the basis of whether there's already a non AI solution uh, to these problems? Or, I mean, do they have to, is, how, does it have to be a challenge where only AI can, um, can deliver an answer? I mean, I'm thinking more in terms of kind of the resource requirements, the kind of energy requirements of, uh, of, of running an AI solution. Uh, you know, maybe it may be a negative compared to the, uh, you know, the benefits of uh, those are there, if you understand my meaning. I'm just kind of just trying to understand whether the, uh, you know, wh whether the, um, the necessity for AI is part of the criteria, if that makes sense, sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so if, uh, okay, so I think that it depends. So if the necessity for AI, uh, if, so if AI is obviously not necessary, right, then the, then obviously this is not very interesting to look, to look into, right? Uh, but if if there are non AI solutions to a problem, and uh, by uh, by bringing in AI would actually improve some aspect of the final solution, and proposals demonstrate this and show us that there's some uh, um, uh, some sort of um, potential impact, then this is this is relevant, and I think. Uh, that uh, proposals having this sort of uh, this quality might fit um, uh, better the third call, if I'm not mistaken. Michele, I don't know if uh, if you have a better. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end, uh, the calls are um, the idea of the course is to to foster the use of uh, earth observation data through artificial intelligence. So, uh, from uh, from our point of view, which are uh, mainly. Uh, a user with technical skills, but we are a user. The important thing is create something useful for us, something that at the end we have a, an impact on our uh, daily daily activity, daily jobs. So let, the idea, of course, uh, is to if uh, sometimes we, we already have some uh, tools of uh, available using AI, but maybe they are not like optimized or are not uh, uh, useful because it takes a lot of uh, let's say. Um, uh, knowledge over and over, not um, useful for like a daily job because of the technical limitation. The idea is to positively impact uh, the our the work of a user uh, through through AI. And uh, I guess one of the part of the, the proposal is also to have a, like a sort of uh, uh, analysis of the state of the art in the, about a specific topic to analyze what is around and to understand how your solution proposed by the bidder will actually be, a, let's say, a sort of a, a added value respect to the normal practices. Great. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, my question sort of came out of, uh, we, we, there's some, some amazing processing is undertaken with huge volumes of data um, being processed uh, through AI systems. Uh, and, and get results very quickly. But what's often not recorded, well, I'm going to say often, but is, is less less recorded is the fact that the training data may have taken a huge amount of time to put together or to be collated and stuff. And to a user, that's still a cost. So um, just to make, you know, I'm, some amazing stuff is being done. But with, as you say, 
can is is it going to be improve, an improvement from the user's point of view, rather than just the technology point of view? So, great, thank you. Um, to, if I can just add to this, because this is this is a very important um, question and a very important topic. Um, part of the reason why these goals exist is is also to to provide. Um, means for users to make use of hardware that can actually undertake AI tasks so that we can actually help a bit with, with this procedure. Because you're right that training can be costly, but then it depends on, I suppose, on the application and on the, the way that you see. I mean, obviously, the, the, the developer is the user of Earth observation data, but they might in the innovation cycle, they also have their own users. Uh, and so it depends on whether their own users can actually get, get something out of it or whether you improve on something. It, it might, it, you might lose on offline processing, but you might win on online processing, or you might win a lot on online processing to the degree that it doesn't ma matter if you miss out on effectiveness, for instance, right? So it, it really depends on the application and the scenario that you've envisaged. And sometimes, AI and non-AI solutions just go go hand in hand, right? So they complement each other, uh, as we've seen in certain in certain ca cases. But but I think that different calls are meant to address different requirements. Um, so, for example, the third call has a minimum uh, a, a, an NTRL of six. The fourth call, I think, is is meant to be used for slightly more. Uh, uh, slightly larger projects or maybe a bit more mature, uh, right? So, so different calls address different different thing, different approaches. Great, thank you. Thank you. I, I guess there's sort of a, a, a fundamental scale there of the the complexity of uh, of the project, as as in any um, sort of research linked uh, uh, activity. Um, what what's the sort of weight between the relevance of the application and the the weight of use of ai how how do you how do you evaluate that what? um i i'm not sure i have this information readily available just now um if anyone from from democritus that might have the uh, response to that if you could share some information with us it would be uh, great um but, uh, but, but but I think, at least if I, if I recall correctly from the first round of evaluations that we did, uh, there wasn't, uh, so, so, so we need to see elements of, of all those things. So, so we need to see elements of, of AI, we need to see the, the uh, use of resources, we need to see earth observation and the use of DSS. Uh, I don't think that we have a rule of thumb that says that unless everything is AI or unless, you know, but, but you have to have something and you have to make you to at least make an attempt to make use of the resources offered by, by the project and by our partners. And, and it, it's up to the proposer to, uh, to convince you of the, uh, uh, the feasibility and the, uh, the practicality, the applicability of the uh, proposal. And the impact, right, and the and, yeah. the, and their uh, capacity to to actually uh, materialize it. Yeah. 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 If I may, if I may add, uh, at the end we are following more or less the structure of a classic H twenty twenty now Horizon Europe uh, proposal. So, evaluate the excellence, and the excellence was uh, mainly related to what uh, Irakis was saying. So the quality of the ideas, the use of the resources, of the meaning uh, Copernicus data or the diocese, uh, I for you. So uh, the excellence is considered this part of the impact, of course, uh, regarding the impact to the specific uh, domain of interest, which can be in our case, uh, security uh, and uh, the implementation, which is more or less like a more classic project uh, management uh, part. So regarding the, are you, what, are you going to develop a project through the defined period? So, and uh, all the type of um, uh, the marks that we, we go to give to the proposal are uh, quite defined in the description of the proposal, the other course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, a little bit of question to everybody. Well, you know, what further information would help you in um, in in addressing these uh, 
um, or these opportunities really, um, you know, what uh, is, there, is there more that you need um, to be made available? Is there more information uh, about other opportunities, about um, cross links? Anyone, uh, anyone got any, any views on that? I see no raised hands. As I said, it's a bit difficult to follow those. There is one from Emina. She said yes. Oh, yes. Okay, in the chat. Great. And another one. <laughs> More Love. time. Yeah. Yeah, that, that follows from the earlier uh, comment. Em, Emina, come in and um, then sort of explain what more information you would you would like. Yes. What, what more can we do to help? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear yes. you. Yes. And I just want to ask if you if there is some cross link with uh, uh, the digital twin generally, and maybe most specifically with the digital twin ocean between artificial intelligence and digital twins? Um, I don't think that there are any explicit links uh, yeah. at, this, at this stage, right? but we follow okay. this, these, these developments uh, to the degree that we can, and they're, they're very interesting to, to us. Yeah, because yeah. Perhaps, data... Sorry, sorry. Guy. No, perhaps, you know, perhaps uh, links like this could also be brought up by uh, by proposals that we that we receive, but we don't really have any explicit links at this stage. Okay. On a project level. Okay, because one is implicit for the other one, I think. No, it is a question. Oh, it's true. I mean, uh, for a question of time, when we came out with uh, the proposals and all the structure, the digital twin concept was a. Uh, uh, around, but uh, the initiative, uh, I guess, was officially launched uh, one week ago. So uh, there were information on this, and also we, when we presented our uh, interest for the, from a security domain, uh, mm -hmm. we stated that it would be also nice to have something related to the digital uh, twin. So it's not really explicit, uh, explicitly required by the by the. Um, by the calls, but of course, if you have uh, some uh, interesting tools uh, that you would like to also to make available for a possible synergy with the uh, digital twins, uh, it's uh, more than welcome. Okay, thank you. It's 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 a subject we want to uh, to come back to. I mean, the, there's the, you know sort of the destination Earth and the digital twin Earth, which is uh, has received a lot of uh, of notice, and there was a um, um, a workshop on that uh, quite recently, um, but I think to try to explain and understand better what is going on there, um, we have uh, we are in contact with uh, um, with, with some of the principals to to try to well, to organise a, a an EO cafe on on that subject. Of course, there are many many digital twins. Um, so that's a, a much, much broader subject, and uh, um, I'm not quite sure how we would we would tackle that. But um, if I was interested in in any particular aspect of digital twins for um, a particular sector, construction sector, for instance, there's a lot of interest there uh, in the, in the topic, or or um, the uh, the ocean twin. Um, then we're, we're we're happy to try to respond on that, and I think it's a it's a very broad subject. Thanks for thanks for bringing that up, Amina. Thank you. Okay, Rolf, I'm sorry we can't uh, we can't give you more time. I think uh, I think that's fixed. Um, we 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 tried to well we brought this subject into the Okafi as early as we could. I mean it's been prepared in a very short time. Um, to because of the deadline, but uh, uh, there's not much we can much more that the project team can do. I don't think. I don't know if there's any uh, any thoughts or possibilities of extensions. Is there any process for people to ask for extensions? Is that is that part of your process or is it absolutely fixed? Uh, I'm I'm not sure whether there's any process for people to ask for for an extension, but uh, but but, uh, but we can definitely um, uh, bring it up to the 
to the, to the project board and uh, and, and see if uh, anything can be done. I I'm afraid I don't have a a response at this stage at, at all. No, and I, I can imagine that you you're following a commission uh, and you know, type uh, framework uh, process where um it's it's not like an ESA process where you know it's often uh, um, extensions are often asked for, but here uh, it would be uh, more, far more difficult, I'm sure. Yeah, it's going to be difficult because uh, I mean the project lasts uh, three years, so yeah. this December of 2023. So by the time that we evaluate the proposal, we start the, the signature of the grant agreement and the project itself, uh, we need a bit of time for to, de to develop the project to evaluate the project. So it's difficult to have a yeah. I mean, all, it, it, the, it it already takes a significant time to get from the call to the uh, launching of of projects. So uh, I I think. Rolf, the only the only answer is to make sure that you're ready in time if you're looking to uh, to respond and uh, uh, keep the uh, proposal um, short but tight. Any last minute um, thoughts or questions before we uh, we draw to an end? There's still time for a chat afterwards, of course. But uh, if you've got any question you want to uh, to put forward. So there's a, a link in the chat if you've got any questions to uh, to ask the project, if there's anything that comes to mind afterwards or you, you don't want to uh, talk about in public, but you'd ask, like to ask the, uh, the project team, uh, there's an email address that you can, uh, you can follow to do, to do that. Um, as I said, this is, this is a subject where there's been a, been a lot of interest. Um, whether we will return to it again, it's difficult to see in, in the time, but um, I imagine uh, there will be some uh, further opportunities to, uh, to come, come back. Um, again, if you've got particular points of view or things you want us to, uh, uh, to consider or try to bring together in the EO Cafe, then we're happy to try to. We're, we're, we're getting a lot of requests from um, from people to to be able to join the EO Cafe and to promote what they're doing or uh, uh, explain the opportunities that are coming up. So we're we're doing our best to balance all the different uh, requests that we're getting, and as I said at the beginning, to balance that in terms of the interest um, from different parts of the sector and the experience of different people have to try to make it uh, useful for uh, for everybody. Um, so I, I like your little banners there for the uh, the open calls. I think those are very nicely uh, put together. Um, so thank you both very much for uh, for joining us. I don't know, is there any last um, last messages you want to uh, deliver before we before we close? We've talked. We've talked about yeah, everything. Really, I mean, at the end, I mean, just to have a look to website because it's true. The timeline is uh, is tight, but the proposal, I think, is feasible to to do something nice by the, the date. So please have a look. And in yeah. case uh, you can also ask the consortium more more questions if you, if needed. Yeah. So no, I just add. I mean, it's not like um, a lot of the calls where a lot of the time is taken in building a team and organising uh, who's in the team. These are, uh, yeah. are very restricted, so um, they should should be uh, easier to respond to. Okay. Well, thank you very much for for, for joining us and uh, explaining. Um, next EO Cafe will be in uh, in two weeks' time. As I said at the beginning, it's every every other Thursday at four o'clock. Um, we will be at our two year anniversary. So we're going back to the very first um, EO Cafe that we had, where we, uh, we had Mauro Fakini uh, from the, for the commission talking about it. And we that was right at the beginning of the lockdown. I mean, people we just didn't, were trying to get to grips with what's going on. Uh, that won't be the case next Thursday, but we have Mauro back with us uh, to talk about the modernization of Copernicus. Uh, when I questioned modernization, I was quickly told that those are those are Thierry Breton's words. So uh, it's not something just invented for the title of the EO Cafe. It's Thierry Breton, the Commissioner Breton's objective. So we'll talk with uh, with Mauro about that. It should be should be interesting to to, to understand the uh, the plans around Copernicus. 
Um, I'm sure you'll have lots of questions for that. So, uh, so come with those, uh, those ready. And um, a final uh, promotion, shall we say, um, the ERSC uh, Expandio will take place this year. I haven't had a, a we had a virtual event last year um, and we were really um, happy this year to be able to uh, to organize a physical event it will be hybrid so people can join remotely but we hope that uh, you'll take the opportunity to join physically and network with other people from 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 the industry and of course from the wider community as as well that will take place on the 14th and 15th of of june and um information on that will be uh will be forthcoming there's a link in the uh in the chat again for for more information uh today and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see many of you there so that that that's about it for this afternoon thank you very much for for being with us hope it's proved uh, interesting and useful hope it results in lots of calls uh for uh for ai for copernicus and that uh you know there's some really successful um uh, projects and ultimately products that uh, come out of it thanks thanks for everybody anyone who wants to uh, join in and just say anything now as you know at the end of the uh, eo cafe we just throw open the microphones and anybody who wants to say anything just just do so <laughs>